Welcome to another episode of Nigeria Decides 2023, coming to you live on Trust TV from Nigeria's capital here in Abuja. Nigerians as early as 8 in the morning today turned out a mass to elect 28 governors and 993 legislators who represent them across the 28 states where elections are holding. Indeed, across all the 36 states where elections are holding. Tonight, we will bring you an update of how the election in, is progressing in some parts of the country, indeed, throughout the country. We'll also have in the studio guests to analyze what is going on across various states, whether or not the elections are meeting the expectations of Nigerians, and how can we continue to improve our electoral processes. As the program progresses also, you, our valued viewers, will also be able to make your contributions when our lines open. But before we go into all that, we will take a moment and bring you reports of the election so far. Stay tuned. It was not the regular day in the state, but one that offered voters the choice of choosing who becomes the next governor of Adamawa State. Senator Aisha Tubinani of the All Progressive Congress, APC, is fighting to unseat Governor Ahmadu Umar Uthentri of the People's Democratic Party and the incumbent governor of the state. Shortly after casting her vote in Yola, she commended the conduct of the exercise and is hopeful of a positive outcome. So I'm, 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 I'm confident in the uh, in the uh, in both the electorates and the officials of the INEC, uh, because this is not the first time they are conducting election. We we just concluded uh, the presidential and national assembly election, and it was uh, it was peaceful and it was a credible election. So I'm confi I have uh, confidence in them. Uh, if you want any any problem. On the flip side, Governor Ahmadu Umar Rufentri is optimistic of continuity as he casts his vote in his home residence of Karsinga Madegeli local government area. This is the first time since 2014 when Boko Haram invaded this town and the people of Karchinga are happy to participate in an exercise of this nature as life gradually returns to normal in their community. Uh, the environment is safe, uh, everywhere is calm and the security has improved. And we thank Almighty Allah, we thank government, and we'll continue to encourage the security agency for doing their job. And I think I'm happy for my people that they are back to their place of abode. Perfect. I will win the election, I will get the day. Voters are positive that the poll will be free and fair as they wait patiently for the outcome of the election. From Yola, Aaron Asahel, Trust TV News. Well, this is one of the voting centers across the metropolitan city of Kano, where hundreds of voters have already turned out to vote. Even though the election has not started yet, it's too early for that. But I can see uh, behind me here are the uh, election officials distributing both sensitive and non-sensitive materials to the electoral officers that are going to take care of all the uh, polling units that are within this primary school in uh, Nasarawa area of Kano Metropolis. But at the moment, many people have come out, have seen so many people sitting down. They are waiting for the electoral officers to start distributing the electoral materials so that voting will commence in this place. I have also visited a number of places. It's surprising. This is one of the few places that I've seen many, many people that turned out. There are other places where I couldn't see anybody. People have not started coming out. Likewise, on the streets, uh, the streets are deserted, but there are also presence of uh, security officials everywhere you go uh, across uh, Kano Metropolis. Now, we are following the situation to see how it's going to start, but it's too early for voting to start. But at the moment, any moment from now, voting is going to start across the state, especially places where electoral materials have already arrived. Well, as of this moment, election is going on across uh, Kano State. But then, like I reported earlier, there are some violence there and then. 
earlier we reported to you that uh, there is violence in in the polling unit of the NNPP uh, gubernatorial candidate Abba Kabir Yusuf, where some thugs attempted to disrupt the process. And on the other hand, these people are accusing the uh, chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Abdullahi Abbas, of sponsoring thugs to disrupt the election process because they are in the same uh, uh, ward. It's just a different of uh, polling uh, polling box. So this uh, crisis, we have seen how uh, a Thox was actually pursuing a police officer with a knife. And then uh, we have also seen how the supporters of the uh, NNPP are pursuing supporters of the APC from the units of uh, uh, NNPP gubernatorial candidate. And we have also seen how supporters of the APC chairman are equally pursuing supporters of the NNPP in their polling units. So do these two crises crisis uh, have happened and we don't know what will happen in the next couple of hours. As my constituency is concerned, uh, I'm confident that um, at the end of the day the INEC is going to conduct a credible election. However, we have some uh, issues of violence. Uh, even here in my constituency, uh, I was reliably informed that um, the APC chairman, who has been a notorious um, party leader has also today brought uh, so many um, thugs into the um, uh, um, P button um, units and um, they have uh, perpetrated uh, violence. They have uh, conducted themselves in an unruly manner and uh, that has been his character uh, which we for quite a long time we informed the security agencies as somebody that feel that he is above the law. And uh, you, President, before I came, have seen by your own naked eyes what happened, uh, the number of, uh, you know, uh, thugs he borrowed. In election, you have small, small crisis here and there, but for so far, so good. And the police are trying, seriously. The turnout is perfect. Everything is going perfectly. Uh, we appreciate the way people are uh, behaving. And the security agencies, what they are doing is uh, recommendable. They should be calm and vote for the, uh, the candidate they want. We have learned that some arrests were made across the state. Uh, we, we learned that the, the managing director of Kano State Transport Authority has been arrested for disrupting uh, uh, election in Gomaja area of Kano Metropolis. We also heard that there are crises not only within Kano Metropolis, I mean, there are crises outskirts. Uh, we had a report of crisis in Rimingado local government, in Rano local government, in Sumaila local government. I mean, in so many places, violence, this pocket of violence are being reported and the police spokesman is saying that they are making some arrests of people who are perpetrating this crisis. Now, also, any moment we do know that the uh, uh, NNPP presidential candidate, Rabi Musa Konkoso, will be addressing a press conference, and I want to believe that he will be addressing this kind of issues arising from the election here in Kano. Unlike that of the presidential election, of course, during the presidential elections, some violence were reported there and then. But I must tell you that the magnitude of the one happening here today is actually different with what happens during the presidential election. Well, this is GSS Balara Bahaludu here in Gualeluk government area of Kano State, where the NNPP governorship candidate uh, Abba Kabir Yusuf is expected to vote. But then there are some commotion going on here at the moment because uh, even though voting has started in some places, but I can see by uh, Abdullahi Abbas, the APC chairman, and also the Abba Kabir Yusuf, who is the gubernatorial candidate of the New Nigeria People's Party. So at the moment, there is a little bit of a crisis going on here even though uh, nobody was uh, 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 killed but we had that a number of people were injured earlier this morning and uh, at the moment there are presence of heavy security uh, uh, police and uh, military outside the gates of this uh, uh, school and they and uh, I have been watching the television program I'm pleased with the reaction in most constituencies. So I think we are lucky. We are getting. We are going to get off lightly. Well, I do not expect anything less because um, uh, we have gone through the constitutional perspectives. 
We told Nigeria what we are going to do. We had a very free uh, party election. A chairman emerged. He was experienced two times governor, a senator. So there is nothing he doesn't know about Nigerian partisan politics. So I think Nigerians eventually trusted us because uh, uh, we mean what we say, we say what we mean. I'm sure my party will win. What do you mean? <laughs> we tell Nigerians that we are going to work for them. We are going to maintain trust. We will not allow anybody knowingly to steal their resources. We will make sure that we encourage them to send their children to school. We encourage them to have health care facilities. And we do. Uh, we did our best, and uh, I think Nigerians appreciated it. Majority of the arrests you see are people who were directly involved in vote buying. I'm sure, as we are, as we are all aware, uh, our mandate uh, as EFCC is to ensure that uh, money influence in politics is totally cut out and uh, eradicated. And um, if you have been following up with public enlightenment, you would have seen where uh, my executive chairman has been on TV saying to everyone when you find anyone report and those numbers are there. So we got credible intelligence and then uh, we acted on those intelligence. And, uh, so a lot, a lot, a, uh, well, all over the states, some were arrested in out of the states, Omaro. Uh, some were arrested also within Ilori, uh, Ilori South, Ilori West. Uh, we were all over uh, the states, all of the local government within the state. We found ourselves all over, and all of these arrests were made there. Quite a lot of money was was still. Uh, it's still fresh now, we're looking at and then still uh, uh, to start investigation into some of them. Like you can see their POSs, yes, yeah, so we can't tell you these are the sum uh, that was exactly what it is, but they are huge, they are quite, quite a lot. The investigation will prove all of that, like I said, but uh, someone was arrested around there. We are an agency set up by law, uh, we go by the provisions of the law, we, we work within the ambit of the law, we won't go outside the law. So we strictly will follow the provisions of the law, basically, so that's what it is. Welcome back. That is a snapshot of what has been happening across the 36 states of the country today. As Nigerian voters go to vote, and as issues, some of them we're already familiar with, some of them just imagine come to light all of them will be part of our discussion with our guest in the studio today. I have with me Dr. Abakar Umar Kari, who is an associate professor of sociology, uh, political sociology at the University of Abuja. And also with me uh, in the studio is uh, Ladi Bala. She is the first uh, female, uh, she's the uh, president of the Nigerian Women uh, Journalists, Nigerian Women Nigerian Association of General, Women Journalists. General Association of Women Journalists, yeah. but also a member of the Center for Democracy and Development. You're welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much, Lema. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, these two to shed quite a lot of uh, uh, ideas and insights on the election. But the question is, where do we start? So um, uh, maybe I start with the lady, because our video also started <laughs> with Edinburgh <laughs> State, where a lady... Yeah. Uh, is <clears throat> is is uh, one of the major candidates in the in the election. Yeah, when so in in Adamast, we have twenty eight governors. I mean, women contesting yeah. for governorship elections in this election today, but only one represents a major political, political party, party platform, and that one yeah. is uh, Senator Aisha Binani in in Edinburgh State. What what as a woman yourself? What are your own expectations at that personal level as a woman? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me start by talking generally about the election today. Mm -hmm. uh, being Saturday, Nigerians, we are all out there, you know, to elect um, their governors and members that will represent them at the various houses of assemblies. And so I want to say 
they generally, you know, um, from information we've collected, you know, through the CDD, our supervisors across the country, uh, shows that um, there were there was an early, you know, start of of the entire of the process. Uh, we 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 notice um, improvement, you know, in terms of uh, delivery of uh, electoral materials, mm. commencement, and. Um, INEC officials were on ground, the, the polling units open on time, mm -hmm. and generally across uh, the, country, the country, we just mm -hmm. little hitches in a few areas of which we can overlook. So generally, I think there is serious improvement mm -hmm. in those uh, areas that have seem to hamper the, 20, uh, the 25th February uh, presidential and national assembly elections. So mm -hmm. uh, we say kudos to, to INEC and uh, the security operatives at that level even though there are other issues, you know, that uh, came, uh, came up in the process. However, talking about the, uh, the Mawa experience, yeah, it is gladdening, you know, to note that uh, in today's uh, governorship election, we have 28 women that are contesting. Mm. So to me, it's an improvement, you know, that women are beginning to step into the murky water of, of, of politics in Nigeria. Mm. So we are making advancement, even though at a slow pace, mm. but I think they said little, little water makes an ocean. Yeah. Uh, that we are now having women, you know, taking, um, stepping mm. into the political scene, uh, to me, is, is, is a plus, mm. but we are still far, far behind. Mm. And for a woman to have emerged, you know, as a candidate on a ruling political party platform, mm. it is a huge plus for the, the quest for advancement of women in um, participation in governance and um, development of the country. So we generally celebrate the emergence of Binani, mm. you know, as the, as the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Party in Adamawa State. Um, I want to say that she, we, we, it did not come to us generally at a surprise, given her, her antecedents, you know, in politics. She's a woman that um, has been in politics. You can describe her as a grassroots politician. She has been close to the people over time. And that's why we talk about, when we talk about women participation, we are talking about women taking their time, you know, to build network. Mm -hmm across board in their community. Mm -hmm. Relate more with the people, let them know you. You know, it's not something that you just wake up today and say, I want to be a governor, I want to be a counselor. But there must be that deliberate and conscious, you know, um, effort to, to link up with the people, to let the people feel you. And then over time, that connect, that bond, you know, will be established. And so when you come out to say you want to seek for their mandate, it becomes much, much easier. And that is what Binani has demonstrated over the, over, over the time. You know, she was one time a member of the House of Representatives, and uh, she's one person that uh, never neglects her constituency. Uh, she has done a lot in terms of providing uh, democracy dividends in her constituency. And sometimes she goes even beyond her constituency. So we in Adamo State, she's always been liking so, to so, so some people who to say, Senator Grace Jackson Bent. Okay, uh, Adamo has been fortunate to have produced women in the parliament. We have the likes of Binta uh, Masi, you know, and other women like that in Adamo State. So for us, in uh, for people in Adamo State, I think uh, we must say kudos to them. And so that is why when Binani came out as a senator, mm -hmm. you know. And now she's advancing to contest so for the exalted office. I agree with all that you have said so far, Prof. Yeah. You know that all, all that uh, the uh, Madam President has said so far is 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 is, is they agree with it. But How, some uh, people was just one minute. Some people was I want to bring the Prof into yeah. the discussion that so all of this is like campaign. <laughs> you know, on election day. <laughs> you know, the question is, yeah. what are the expectations for her today? Do we expect that based on maybe early results coming in or based on other metrics, what do we expect uh, uh, today? Maybe Prof, you can go first and then we'll come back to you. Yes. Yeah, I think I'll proceed by saying that it will be very difficult to fault uh, Madam Ladi's assertions on, yes. uh, on benign because they are statements of facts, uh, actually. She's one lady who has changed the political landscape of Adamawa State. Mm -hmm. Uh, since uh, when she came out, and I think uh, no words can be 
too much uh, to describe her politics. And uh, talking about campaign, I think there's no more campaign. The election has, <laughs> <laughs> has taken place. So yes. It's not going to fetch any more yeah, votes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the polling the election, units have closed. <laughs> yes. Uh, the polling <laughs> units have closed. And I'm sure by now, probably a, a winner may have emerged uh, <laughs> through the process of collation. Mm. And in terms of expectation, I think it will be uh, a great. Uh, novel development mm -hmm. if at the end of the day uh, she she, <laughs> she wins mm -hmm. because it is going to change the narrative mm -hmm. uh, completely mm -hmm. particularly in terms of uh, women political self-actualization mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. and uh, particularly Binani's uh, case is unique in the sense that she's ethnically Fulani. Yes. Yes. And Fulani women are supposed to be timid. Mm. They are supposed to be. Uh, be. Head? Yes. Mm. Head. <laughs> not seen. Not, not seen. seen. Yes. <laughs> Even head, man. Not much. <laughs> yes. uh, so yeah. mm. they are very, very conservative. Mm. And if you look at the forces uh, rallied against her, mm. they are very, very formidable forces. Yeah. I will mention uh, about three. Uh, the fact that she's facing an incumbent yes. who has all the advantages of uh, incumbency, incumbency, the resources of the state, mm. uh, and so on and so forth. I've already mentioned the patriarchal nature of the kind of society that she has come from, uh, where women political actualization mm. are usually limited or uh, restricted but she also uh, faced formidable opposition particularly the Islamic clerics the Islamic clerics have really campaigned uh, against her uh, bringing about some controversial uh, Islamic injunction against the participation of women uh, and so on and so forth therefore uh, the very fact that she emerged as a candidate was a phenomenal political development. But if she wins, it will really change uh, the narrative. Yeah. And I think she's going to serve as a real uh, reference, as a role model. reference, a role model yeah. uh, to women, not only in northern Nigeria, but uh, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. But, but you were talking I was, about... Okay. I, I was mm -hmm. going to add yes, that. Yes, yes. Um, the case of Binani is where one isolated case that uh, globally at the Mao State is being... As, uh, is now is being watched mm -hmm. as to what we come out of that. He rightly, you know, noted the fact that she is facing a strong opposition in that state in the fact that the incumbent governor is one that you, you whether you like it or not, you have to give it to him that he has performed well mm -hmm. in terms of providing um, dividends of democracy in Adamawa State. He has changed the landscape of Adamawa State in terms of providing roads and other um, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that's you, whether you, as you like Fintry or not, mm -hmm. uh, you have, if you have visited Adamawa like um, five years ago and now you will have to give it to him. So mm -hmm. that factor is there and he will call you talk about the religious factor mm. uh, but you know and again you talk about the campaign mm. if you look at uh, even the presidential election and this election there are a lot of surprises mm. that are coming up most of the time you see all the crowd around the, the candidates and you keep wondering who, who is actually fooling who <laughs> so it is at the end of the after the ballots or, or after the results have been sorted out that we'll be able to tell who truly the people were actually rooting for because we, all the candidates, you see people anywhere, Massive all the places rallies, that Binani everywhere. went through, mm -hmm. when you see the large turnout of people, you will just, ah, this woman is taking the whole day. And women, I must commend women in Adama State because in all her rallies, you see more of women, mm -hmm. you know, and they say women don't support women. But I think in this special case, we've seen women, you know, coming out in large number in all the rallies she has had, you know, showing their... Uh, support to her, but is we are yet we are we are still waiting to see how that translates into 
you know, really? through um, uh, vodcast and uh, how to wear match. But like you said, is it will be uh, one of the best things that we'll celebrate in this uh, 2023 election mm -hmm. if um, uh, Binani actually emerges as governor. Mm -hmm. And Adama State is one state that has always come up with surprises. Mm -hmm. That you are equally an incumbent. It does not really guarantee that you would like Vintri, when Vintri came on board, it, nobody expected that Vintri was going to emerge mm. because we have a sitting ruling party governor yes. in the state in terms of uh, Bindo, Bindo, you know, APC governor. Mm. And uh, the, expect, the expectation is that he should go for a second time and mm. he did all he could. But the people of Adama State at the end of the day rooted for the PDP and Adama State became a mm. PDP state. So mm. we, still, we still fold our hands and we keep our hands crossed and see what becomes of... Um, mm. Uh, the the, the translation of the very, very of interesting. You said that we're, we're waiting for what the outcome will be, will and then we'll yeah. be able to say. Uh, see, yeah. And I think we are also waiting uh, to see if we'll be able to get uh, the can the governorship candidate of the APC, uh, Senator Aisha Binani, on this program today. We are in touch with her team, and we are looking to have her live as uh, our, as the program. Proceed. So maybe you will have an opportunity to also Tax. engage with her when that comes. Yeah. But uh, Prof, maybe we can go back to what um, Madam President was saying earlier. I think it's fine for me to call you Madam President. You are a sitting <laughs> president <laughs> yeah. yourself. So, you know, uh, that um, this, uh, this early voters, it was not the key, uh, early arrival of uh, election officials and uh, voting materials, uh, which you mentioned earlier, but which was not the case in the presidential, presidential election just three weeks uh, ago. In that election, there was a general consensus that across oh. many parts of the country, there were the delays in some places, quite unbearable delays before these things arrived. So what changed in just two weeks? Yeah, I think uh, INEC made a commitment that... Uh, it was going to learn from the mistakes yeah. of February 25th. Yeah. And it also claimed that it had noted uh, all the factors that led to the logistical uh, fiasco yeah. of that day, uh, so to say. So for me, I think Annie simply decided to address the problem, and they did. And uh, these kind of things actually happened. And even on February 25th, for me, I think the problem with uh, uh, settling the transporters uh, was one of the major causes okay. of that particular delay. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, Anna didn't get uh, their money in mm -hmm. good time. The cash and because of the still... cash, yes, no. the scarcity of cash, uh, no. and so on and so forth, all these added to the problem. Mm -hmm. But it is quite uh, pleasant. Uh, to note that INEC went back home, studied the situation, mm -hmm. decided to take appropriate measures, mm -hmm. and the measures worked uh, this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that I think, by all accounts, the accounts of the major mm -hmm. uh, monitors, uh, deployment mm -hmm. was done uh, in good time mm -hmm. uh, in virtually all the states. Mm -hmm. And uh, actual accreditation and voting also started uh, in good time. Uh, it is also good to note that there are fewer cases of uh, uh, malfunction of the, the BVS. BVS. Mm. But above everything, I think the major improvement that uh, uh, was witnessed today mm. had to do with uh, uh, security. Yes. There was serious care, very serious care. Uh, because of the nature of the race in many of the states. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Security is one is an, a strong issue in its own right. Okay. And I think we'll come to okay. dig deeper okay. uh, mm. into it because it's a local state level election, which are generally more crude than the presidential uh, uh, election. But um, uh, Madame, he was uh, uh, talking about the, the fact that INEC improved its methods, improved, you know, uh, you know, lived up to its commitment, yeah. but also that uh, because of the cash crunch, you know, which was closer to the presidential election and, 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 and so on. But as one of the monitors, because the CDD are yes. also election, uh, major election monitors across the country, to what extent can you say that these delays in arrival of materials and officials 
impact on the credibility of the process, you know, in the eyes of many voters or observers? Uh, yeah, INEC actually, you know, INEC is on, INEC is like, is on a voyage of redeeming its, its image yeah. in the eyes of Nigerians. Uh, because Nigerians lost confidence and that led to the low turn up of voters mm. this time around in the governorship election. Mm. So it was uh, imperative on INEC, you know, to redeem its image by doing the needful. Mm. And it's like there are certain things that INEC took for granted. Because when we talk about the issue of logistics, these are issues that have been rigged occurring in for, all, all, all the all electoral the yes. Yes, cycles. We've always had that, that problem. Yes. So ideally, it is uh, an issue that one would have expected that in our almost 24 mm. uh, years uh, the, since the return to democracy, you know, that these logistic issued, issues should have been tackled yes. headlong. But Seriously. till today, we are still experiencing it. Not that even the one we are talking about, it was like substantially, mm. you know, it was better compared to the presidential election. election. Yeah. So I think INEC, um, uh, you know, really took time mm. to look at those logistic issues. Like you said, mm. we have to look at the human element too in the entire process mm. because we, we, we had stories of uh, all these, uh, um, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, the, the, and yes, you know, after mm -hmm. all the arrangement and then on the day, after engaging some of the, mm -hmm. the drivers, you know, uh, on, on this uh, project, on the day of delivery, mm -hmm. some of them will come and down their tools and shut their cars, mm -hmm. off the car and say they need additional, yes. additional mm -hmm. payment Money, yes. apart mm -hmm. from what has been agreed. And you can imagine at the nick of, uh, I mean, the last minute, someone that is supposed to convey sensitive materials, I mean, I mean non-sensitive materials or materials, electoral materials coming to tell you that, no, the agreement that we had like three months ago, that it's I'm paying a certain, certain amount, mm. and you're coming on the eve of the program to tell me, even to say, mm. sorry, we cannot accept if you will give me such an amount. So it's like more or less like a black a blackmail black somehow. Mm. So those human elements too are not issues that I make me want to come to the public space mm -hmm. and be discussing that. But from the vine, grapevine, we, we, we were able to filter some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. So I think um, INEC has done well. And mm -hmm. the issue of cash, don't forget that in this election cycle, mm -hmm. INEC, everything that INEC required was mm -hmm. provided. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Their money provided 100% ahead of the time of election. Mm -hmm. Even when there was uh, the, the cash uh, crunch. crunch thing, the CBN was directed and their money was delivered to them. I never had this money. Mm -hmm. But those human elements that always come to play, mm -hmm. that we cannot actually factor it, we cannot deal with them in isolation, I think. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the problems. Thank you. Yes. Interesting, Prof. You mentioned uh, beavers you know, um, uh, uh, which in the last election also <laughs> malfunctioned considerably. Yeah. You know, there was not, not even the transmission of results <laughs> now. The first component of VIVAS, which is to accredit the accreditation of voters, voters right? Yeah. In the last election, there were, you know, v many complaints of failure Taylor. of that, those machines in many uh, parts of the country. But there have been fewer such complaints in this uh, 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 election. What does that mean to the process and to our transition to more electronic, uh, uh, more use of uh, technology in the process uh, uh, so far? Uh, it means a lot because the greatest innovation uh, of this 2023 uh, election, of course, uh, is the beavers just like the card uh, smart card reader mm. uh, before it. Mm. Uh, the smooth and seamless functioning of the beavers uh, is a major precondition for even having uh, a good election. Interesting. Yeah, uh, in the first place. Because the beavers is the major instrument uh, that is used to accredit uh, voters and also to serve the records of the vote. And therefore, if anything happens to the beavers, mm. then the whole election uh, will likely going to have a problem. And therefore, uh, INEC always claims okay, that uh, it has more uh, of the machines 
than uh, is required. Of polling units. Yes. Uh, so that if and when uh, necessary, uh, where necessary, mm. they can do uh, replacement. Mm. And we should also go back to the human uh, angle again. I think the improvement has to do with the fact that uh, some of the ad hoc staff, uh, perhaps they had their first experience with the beavers on February 25th. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Train. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> training. <laughs> you know, training are reality sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. They don't so, always... Uh, hey. So now... Uh, they're in, engaging more with the technology, of course. so they're becoming yes. more familiar with it. Okay. Practice, uh, yeah. they say, make perfect. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that is also uh, another element. Remember the smart card reader at that time? You know, just to open a particular whatever oh, will become uh, yeah. yes, uh, a problem. Yeah. And so the whole election uh, will be messed up. Uh, incident forms uh, had to be used and so on and so forth. Thank you. So I think yeah. it comes uh, with technology, particularly in our own uh, type of society. society. The more you use it, yeah. the better you become uh, a user. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, mm -hmm. but uh, beavers is a key element. Mm -hmm. In fact, an indispensable mm. uh, requirement mm. for this election. Interesting. Mm. Thank you. So That's actually helped, okay. you know, mm. in reducing the, uh, the cases of um, um, people that are not, you know, mm. over voting mm. and all that. It has actually reduced it because mm. you must be captured, either your face or your fingerprint. Mm. And so it's unlike... In, without the vivas, when we the vivas wasn't mm. there, anybody could just come and claim, and you know, and then you would not, yes. Mm. So that has actually helped mm. in uh, cleaning the process of identification mm. and equally of um, when, but the capturing, you know, of the result and what actually yeah. is, that was exactly okay, the question that was going that's to, a mm. cold, oh, that, okay. that is the question I was going to ask you next, actually. <laughs> that there's this, there is a second component to it because, as Prof said, beavers has come mm. is become indispensable mm. to credibility of elections, not just to making this process smoother, mm. but also more credible. More credible. And Nigerians have come to have a lot of confidence Fate. in the in beavers itself, right? You know, but in the last election, the second aspect of beavers didn't work at all particularly for the presidential uh, uh, election. So you are in the monitoring <laughs> yes. uh, 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 business now. Are you f aware that the transmission of results by beavers, by electronic mix, is it going on in this election today? And to what extent? Yes, okay. yes, a serious improvement. Mm. As of, uh, I think, 4 p.m. this evening, oh. about almost... Um, 70% uh, of results have been uploaded. Interesting. And mm. yes, and there's serious improvement actually. And just like he said, you know, these are technology. I think what happened in the presidential election mm. is the fact that INEC underestimated, mm. you know, the, uh, the, 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 what is on ground. Mm. You know, INEC felt they have done everything possible and ruled out the possibility mm. of any hitches mm. completely. Mm. So is that height of assurances that mm. Nigerians got, mm. you know, that actually made many people to have faith in the process? Mm. Because over time, the INEC national uh, German has, you know, hampered on the fact that, mm. that this, the, the technology is the game changer. Yes. And that actually elicited, you know, the interest of the youths the Nigerian youths, mm. because they felt that, ah, if this is what we make the change, mm. then we all have to be involved. Mm. And even those that were never interested in Nigerian politics, don't forget there's this deficit of trust mm. and suspicions mm. among the Ni Nigerians and their leaders. And even the there. institutions, mm. you know, that are expected to deliver on this responsibility, INEC in particular. Nigerians have always cast this shadow of doubt on INEC, even in previous elections. Mm. But in this election, build up to this election, the INEC chairman has been consistent in assuring Nigerians, especially with the cycle elections in Oshun, Ekiti, mm. you know, and uh, the MOK, uh, whatever. And that actually helped in boosting the confidence of Nigerians. And in all their explanation is that this is a game changer. Mm. Result will be uploaded. 
at almost immediately. Mm. So, so is, so that was is, what is it possible to say? So if, yeah, okay, if right. INEC mm. was able to like tell Nigerians that mm. these things, should anything happen, we equally have a plan B. Okay. Like they did. Like people in this, were in this, aware that there's plan B. For so instance, if in this governorship, the, election, yes, they said uh, they, they will be upload, uh, transmitting results on dual mode, mm -hmm. either through the um, uh, up uploading the manual, it on the RFO. Yes, through electronic or, or manual or manually. Mm -hmm. So you know, you are at peace. Mm -hmm. Anyhow it comes, you accept it that, okay, initially this is what they say they will do, and we are, not, we are okay with that. Mm -hmm. But I think that was all heightened the expectations of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So... One, the moment the result and every other thing went on well because Nigerians were, were okay with the entire process, even with the little hitches of late arrival and all that, Nigerians were still okay with that. If you know, if you yes. observe what happened yes. until one hour, two hours, four hours later, when uh, National Assembly's result, you know, were seen uploaded, you know, they were uploaded initially, and then the presidential elections result were not. Mm -hmm. And the next is as if the cyber went down Mandel. completely. And so people were now asking questions, come, what is really going on here? I think that was just the missing link Indeed. in the entire process. Yes. And mm. just that little error, mm. you know, appeared to have rubbished mm. the whole effort that mm. INEC put into, into the 2023 this. general elections. Thank so, you. and that is why this uh, governorship election, INEC had to like, Prove itself that yeah. what happened was an error. Interesting. Wasn't a deliberate. Thank so, yeah. thank you. This raises a, 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 an immediate question, Prof. Mm. That if what happened in the presidential election was an error, you know, not deliberate effort to circumvent the process, because but an, an, an error. And now uh, they, are, <clears throat> they are making good their commitment to upload the results and to the extent that yeah. independent observers like yourself. Uh, can confirm that 70% of the results across the 36 states My have 40. been already uh, up uploaded. Mind that in some places, collation uh, is still in progress, even as we, uh, as we speak. So would that improve confidence in the credibility of the previous election now, in a way that, okay, mm -hmm. even if you had issues in the previous election, now that you have done well, maybe this means that the previous election also didn't have some of the problems and 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 and, and, and doubts that people uh, have been raising about it. Well, it should, but you see, we are dealing with human beings, yeah. and we are dealing with perception. Absolutely. And perception sometimes is far stronger than reality. Yes. yes. Uh, and it is in our nature to be overly pessimistic mm -hmm. and uh, overly suspicious, mm -hmm. because <laughs> even the event of. Uh, uh, February 25th mm -hmm. has been given different interpretation. Uh, all sort of conspiracy theories have been uh, <laughs> trump up mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Uh, so it, 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 it should take time mm -hmm. uh, to build confidence, particularly if uh, you build a shattered confidence. Mm -hmm. A shattered confidence uh, is uh, usually not mended immediately. immediately. Yes, uh, it takes time. Mm. But also, I think one of the major things uh, that is being neglected, mm. and which happened on February 25th, was the wrong impression created that uh, transmission of result uh, to IREV uh, equates is to the test of credibility. Mm. No, no to collation. Okay. Yes, and it's not collation actually, mm. but it is something that can be used mm. to confirm mm. collation what has done. Been yes. Mm. So, uh, many people still have this impression okay that uh, uh, the moment from EC ETA mm. uh, mm. is signed, uh, scanned uh, and sent to IREV that some uh, mathematics will completely come uh, into the RF itself, and then the it's to show we now so so this is a widely held notion, mm. which INEC has not done much to explain, uh, explain to people. Interesting. You see, so one of the things that perhaps will build confidence among the people is education, mm. uh, enlightenment. Try to explain to them uh, perhaps after the election, and uh, come up with 
very plausible argument mm. as to what actually transpired mm. on February 25th. Mm. It has not been done now. Yes. Uh, she's only privileged to know, mm. and she's telling us. Yes. But uh, such as the come from official quarters. Yes. yes. So uh, perhaps one of the post-election responsibilities of INEC, yes. of course, is to rebuild the shattered confidence mm. through bringing up persuasive explanations, mm. uh, arguments. Regarding what really happened. Exactly. Okay, so that uh, henceforth, mm. uh, Nigerians will now uh, come to realize what exactly happened and then hope that the in subsequent system. elections, mm. uh, there will be improvement. Improvement. Th th thank you very much, Prof. But there's another area that also some things that we saw in this uh, election, which uh, CDD actually pointed to even earlier, mm. that, okay, well, as uh, the electoral processes improve, um, other challenges come up, such as vote buying, yeah. more sophisticated or at least more <laughs> varied ways of buying votes. And even as I speak, we have videos uh, uh, of uh, these instances across the country, which we're, go we're going to show one or two uh, 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 very soon to see how this idea of vote buying and the forms in which uh, uh, they are taking right, sometimes right uh, uh, across the, the polling booths, uh, you know, in, in, in the public uh, glare okay. for everyone to, to, to actually see what is going on. So you have this situation. There have been many reports of vote buying, you know, people giving out utensils, collecting mm -hmm. clothes, collecting spaghetti, Vouchers. indomie, <laughs> sometimes even cooked indomie, you know? And, 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 and so how, from uh, a civil society perspective, how do you view these things? Uh, exactly, I was going to <laughs> ask you to allow me <laughs> to comment, I, because I don't want mm -hmm. us to just have a sweeping. Okay, just, uh, we, we have the video now on, mm -hmm. can we get the audio? Okay. This is Amana, <laughs> I think we can all see what has been going on. Well, the first interesting thing is the new Nera notes that are supposed to be scarce. They are not scarce to some people, are they? Mm -mm. Because it is new Nera notes that were being dished out to, to voters right on the queue. What's going on? Yeah, like I was trying to say that before we can pass, give a pass mark mm. to the entire process, there are other variables that we must review. Mm. Uh, some trends, unhealthy trends, you know, mm. that um, happened in today's election. Mm. Unlike in the presidential election, even though like in CDD, some of the, uh, the framing of the thematic areas that we anticipated that uh, we define of the process where we're looking at the, the insecurity we talked about the institutions mm. you know and we talked about inter intra interparty mm. um uh, crisis we equally looked at uh, um inform information and all those variables violence and all that but mm. you know compared to the presidential election what we ex what we experience in this uh, governorship election f is far far higher in terms of violence, one of the things that characterized today's um, election in most parts of the country was violence, harassment, vote buying, in broad daylight, inducements. And this was not glary in the presidential election. Now, there was scarcity of cash. This time around, 
they yes, all have a bit more of and, and that equally goes to confirm you know some stories in other quarters that uh, the, most of these governors they have this money you know starch in their houses they all have the new nera notes and the old nera notes and uh, what the the supreme court did or whatever that has happened mm -hmm. is to enable them spend the money that they have uh, you know kept for this election and if not how do you explain as since the NERA uh, uh, redesign issue has been resolved. Go to ATM, you cannot find a cobble. Mm. There's no NERA anywhere. But today, politicians are giving out money. The new NERA notes. Mm. And so it goes to say a lot about the, the psyche, you know, of our political elites. Mm. And these are some of the things that are undermining the, the political development of, of Nigeria, sincerely speaking. Mm. So it is a sad development that we are witnessing this in this um, governorship election. Mm. And to me, uh, it, it, it remains to be seen if Nigerians will applaud this process at the end of the day. Mm. Because these are things that we are not actually visible in the presidential election, but they are defining the, the, the governorship election. Mm. Beyond the, the, the vote buying, you know, and um, the violence, there were killings. We will, we will we'll come to the, the violence because I, I think that's <coughs> an issue, uh, a major issue in its own Suppression right. Suppression of voters. You, and you're also uh, uh, correct that there Openly. have been more reported incidences of the violence in this election uh, yeah. than in the uh, February 25th yes. election. But I want us to stay on this vote buying uh, issue for a few minutes, okay. you know, so that uh, Nigerians can get to have a feel of what's happening uh, across the country. This incident is happening in Bauchi State, which incidentally happens to be <laughs> your home state, you know. So, you know, it was, you know, it happened in my very constituency. Very serious. <laughs> you know. So, how do you look at this? And he's a sitting commissioner. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's a very, very sad development, mm. actually. Mm. Uh, even though this thing happened mm. before the election, mm. it happened, uh, okay, yesterday because. Uh, I started seeing okay, this, it was uh, not video. at the uh, uh, oh, no. uh, polling unit. Yes, oh, okay. and that's exactly where I'm coming from. Mm. That there have been more inducement, mm. more vote buying uh, in court mm. before the polling unit, mm. before reaching the polling unit. Then mm. at that at mm. uh, okay polling unit. Interesting. And that thing has almost become mm. a feature of our political culture. <laughs> it has not started now. Yes. It has become uh, entrenched. Uh, in fact, a certain aspect of it have almost been accepted mm. as a normal thing. Mm. It is now normal uh, for candidates and their political parties mm. uh, to go to villages and town to induce women to, by giving them all sorts of things uh, before election. Uh, even the very idea of buying cars and motorcycles For and sewing machines mm. and whatever, mm. they are all part of what mm. buying. Mm. Yes. Mm. And they usually take place before election day. Mm. In fact, what happens on election day is an infinitesimal uh, oh. <laughs> yes, fraction mm. of mm. Really this so-called vote buying. But my major worry about that video is actually not even the act itself. But the fact that it yeah. was perpetrated By. in the very mm. presence of security okay. agents mm. who acted as willing accomplices, mm. clearing the road for their mm. uh, principal, yes. uh, so to say, mm. to be doling out this cash to people mm. rather than arresting. Mm. Because and it's also opposition party representatives, PDP, rather well, than. No, it's a know. ruling party <clears throat> in the state. Okay, I know ruling party in the state because yes. in the vote buying uh, debate at the presidential level, the opposition parties framed it as if it was only no, 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 no. The, the, reality, yes. the reality is all parties all always parties. engage in vote buying. Vote yes, in fact, it would be very, very wrong uh, for anyone like, to assume that hmm. there is a particular party that is uh, always guilty of, uh, of vote buying. Hmm. All or almost all the parties, mm. particularly uh, the major parties, are involved in it. So, it. but the impunity in it is my major problem. Mm. But the police, the man, some people will say they are not on official election duty. Their duty is to protect. They are a they are does not have any official the, time okay. of of upholding the law. Yes, thank you. And this thing is a clear violation of the electoral act. Absolutely, with a. Uh, 
clearly spell out sanctions and uh, I have not read the police act or whatever, mm. but I'm very sure a policeman is supposed to uh, stop any act mm. that is deemed to be uh, unlawful mm. or illegal, mm. even if he or she uh, is not invited. But what these gentlemen uh, in uniform were doing was actually to aid and abate Crime. the very act. Mm. Thank you. So and it's a criminal act, actually. actually. Yeah. Yes, it's, 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 a, criminal it's act. a criminal act because there are sentences for vote buying as well. But, but why we even okay. talk about yes. the politicians trying to induce uh, voters? Mm. It will interest you to know that in some states, you know, in the western part, mm. the electorate are the ones bargaining, asking the politicians mm. that they want to sell, how much are they giving them? Madam Adi, even in the north, it happened. No, because I'm just saying that we have this on the In past elections, mm. where Give voters mm. will even put a, yes. a green leaves mm. on their head, <laughs> actually inviting people to come and buy again. To come and buy For their vote. For their yes. Head. So they cast their so vote. So it's an economy, I mean, it's, 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 it's a market uh, on itself. Mm. There's a political economy. So it's, uh, Explanation around around it, it. so it's yes. a vote trading yes. rather than just vote yes. buying. It is transactional. Because the sellers, are, the sellers are also willing to sell, of course, to, yes. to some extent. Because but if you know the weaponization of, of mm. okay, go on. Mm. Of a hunger, there's so much hunger in the land. Because that's where I was going. If you there notice that so video, so much hunger in the land. Most of the people are women. Are women. So women appear because they are half of the electorate, but they appear to be the major targets of vote buying or vote trading activities. What, what, what can you say about this? Yeah. Not just women. Okay. I, you know, it is a sad uh, development in our, in our politics in Nigeria, sincerely speaking. Mm -hmm. The weaponization of um, poverty, poverty. Yes. is the root cause <laughs> of all this. Mm -hmm. The level of hunger in the land is better imagined. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. And so, for someone, for an elderly, an adult, somebody with a family to walk up to you and say, can you buy a loaf of bread for me? I'll give you an instance. I was, I went, I was in a shopping mall to pick some few things. Mm. And the security man there in his uniform walked up to me and greeted me and said, madam, he didn't ask me for money. He said, please, can you buy a loaf of bread for me? What will make an adult to walk up to a person you have never known he's in your life there. and he's walking there mm. to tell you that he has family he needs he will be going home mm. maybe he has children mm. he has nothing to take home now this is in the city go to the rural society and see what is happening so the level of hunger in the land and i think the politicians this is what they use to impoverish the people at the end of the day you now turn around and you are giving them handouts what, a, a, what can two pieces of Indomie mm. do? But women are even, people are even willing to collect. Yes. As far as they are concerned, let them quench the hunger of today and trust God for tomorrow. Mm. So it is something that, sincerely speaking, as a nation and as we have new leaders coming on board, if not for anything, for the fear of God, let there be sincerity of purpose in providing good governance in this country. We cannot continue to ride, you know, on the people. Now they are all going back to the people. The moment everybody picks, the, uh, the people hand over power to them and they alienate themselves from the people. And so you cannot even reach out to them. It's, we, in fact, the people don't even want to get to you. The moment you can provide the basics, I don't think, no, I don't think there, are, there, there will be people that will want to, you know, reduce themselves to nothing before you just for, for, for food. Mm. So, but we should make things to work in this country. People will not have to go hungry. Let there be job opportunities for our young people. Let, let, let's develop our industry. Mm. We are such a country that we are so blessed by God. Mm. Blessed both in human and natural resources. Let me, at, at that point, let me bring in Prof. Because you mentioned one very important thing, the weaponization of poverty. poverty. You know. So this violence, which she was talking about earlier, which you also uh, referred to earlier, there has been a bit more widespread, yeah. at least at, to the point that we can say at this level, you know, based on news reports, you know, social media reports and so on, in Kano, 
in, okay. in Bielsa, in several parts of the country, there have been quite, uh, there have been many reports of uh, togs, you know, snatching okay. ballot papers, you know, uh, or snatching beavers machines, or even in some cases, engaging in, 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 in fights with either security people or other voters and, 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 and so on. So does that also, uh, uh, does that also have something to do with the weaponization of poverty that uh, uh, Madam uh, Ladi was talking about? Oh. Well, uh, <clears throat> it is one of the causes, uh, mm. okay, perhaps. You know, when you are looking for mm. the major reason behind uh, mm. every behavior mm. uh, or action, mm. you have to look at uh, a range of options. And yes. one of the commonest options, of mm. course, is the political economy option. It has to do with uh, mm. uh, uh, okay, weapon. Mm. And it makes sense because if you look at the profile, of those who perpetrated such acts. In most cases, they are from uh, poor homes, uh, poorly educated, uh, people uh, of certain uh, uh, age brackets. In most cases, uh, unemployed, underemployed, and so on and so forth. So these are the people that you can easily mobilize simply by uh, capitalizing on the fact that they are in need. Interesting. Yes. These are people who uh, cannot afford the basic things of life. Mm. And so they are a ready-made army mm. to be engaged by desperate politicians Absolutely. who now want to circumvent uh, the process and capture power at all costs. Mm. And unfortunately there have been massive and poverty poverty, mm. uh, unemployment, illiteracy, mm. and so on and so forth, which have uh, collectively produced this scary army mm. of youth that can actually be uh, engaged Induced. and be unleashed. On, yes. Yes, and that is what is happening. So mm. actually that is the meaning of Thank the uh, weaponization of the poverty. Okay. So the poverty uh, status of these people mm. has now been made as a weapon. Mm. By so, those who are in power. Yes. yes. So they are now a ready-made army to be recruited mm. to create problems uh, for the society. Mm. Thank you. And I wholly agree with her. Mm. The solution simply is to provide good governance that will guarantee the elimination of poverty mm. or at least substantial reduction, reduction of poverty, of poverty. Mm. so that the ranks of this army of uh, ready-made uh, hoodlums mm. can be substantially reduced but as long as these people are there they can always be engaged by people to uh, perpetrate nefarious uh, actions mm. and activities against society. Mm. Thank you. While you're, you're, you're speaking, uh, we got reports that uh, Ahmed Saju, who is spokesperson of the Adamawa uh, governorship campaign, uh, that of uh, Senator Aisha uh, Benani, is on, is waiting for us and we'll be asking him one of few questions. I hope you too, uh, Prof, and uh, our guest will also have a few questions uh, for you. Uh, welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023 uh, on Trust TV, Malam uh, uh, Ahmed Sajo. It's good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I, when we were preparing for today's program, I was, uh, I asked them to say, okay, yes, can sir. we get uh, Ahmed Sajo? Then I was told that, you know, you're back home in, in Adam actually <laughs> preparing uh, uh, for the elections. So how are things looking for you? Yes, sir. For your campaign, for the APC governorship campaign in Adam State. What are the prospects, you know, realistic prospects that Nigeria is going to have its first female uh, governor uh, uh, on, the mo on, 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 on the morning tomorrow? Yeah, uh, Dr. Suleiman, let me tell you that I've never been uh, more proud of being uh, a Nigerian and an Adamawa person than I am today. Uh, you know me, I am an advocate of uh, equity. 
I'm an, an advocate of fairness, uh, justice, and inclusion. And I believe that um, when you live in a society, there should be some level of uh, inclusion, that uh, everybody should have a role to play. We promoted uh, a female candidate, not because she's a female, but because we believe that she's capable and uh, she could deliver. We promoted a candidate whose um, major uh, selling points are empathy, uh, generosity, uh, humility. And we, we believe that these values are required in a nation at a point like this. And uh, for the first time, we knew we were swimming against the tide. Uh, we knew that um, we had uh, waters that are infested by sharks, but we were not afraid to venture into those waters to swim against those. Almost there, okay. we are almost our, our at the threshold. I tell you that you. Uh, in practically every state, hello? Yes, I said our in guests In practically uh, have every local government, uh, our candidate is leading. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the question is by now, you have uh, a situation room where you would have been seeing results yes. as they are being filed, you know, either on the IRF or those ones filed by I'm just coming from across there. the various polling units across the state. What does these results tell you at this point? Because the whole world is well, this watching results Adama tell us expectations. To, to pro <laughs> the results are telling us that we should prepare to take over Adamawa State and install the first female governor in Adamawa State who will incidentally be sworn in by the first female chief judge of Adama State. We are at the threshold of making history. We, we, we are making huge gains in very strong places like Yola North and South. We are making huge gains in strong places like Mubi North and South. We are making gains in Fufore. We are making gains. We, we have about eight local governments so far where we are leading with a very wide margin. Mm. And, and these are some of the most decisive local governments. So we, we, we are within, but we're sure that um, as the trend continues, uh, Aisha to Senator Aisha to Nairu Ahmad Binani will be declared the governor of Adama State tomorrow or the day after, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you very much. Do you have a question? Yes, please. Mm. Uh, my question is, uh, isn't it too early to begin to predict the outcome of the elections? I believe Adama has 21 local government areas, and if you only have results coming out from eight states, is that enough for you to begin to predict um, no, no, the, no, 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 the no. win of um, we are Senator not Aisha saying... Binani? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, go ahead. No, I'm yes. not saying we have results from... We're not saying we have results from eight local government. We are saying that we have a clear lead okay. in about eight local governments. And in all the other local governments, uh, except six, we are, we, we, we are, we are also uh, either neck to neck or ahead. So we, we, we know exactly, we know the patterns. We know the areas that have uh, the large populations. We know the areas that have large voters. It's not like, uh, you know, politics is, uh, is, is, is not magic. If you know the configuration of uh, your political entity, you can, you, can, you can begin to permutate based on uh, voter turnout and, 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 and voting patterns. We know exactly where we're heading to. And I assure you that uh, Senator Aisha Tudairo Ahmed Binani is as good as uh, cruising to victory. One last, one last question. Okay. Um, being the first uh, female uh, yes, governorship candidate in Adamawa State, and before now, women do come out to, yeah. to you know, to, to, to exercise their franchise. How will you compare, you know, uh, the turnout of women, you know, in today's election in Adamawa State, you know, because we, we now have a female that is running. How will you compare it? Is it that this time around we have more women or, or is it just the usual? Because generally we learn that there is a little bit uh, low turnout of people too no. in Adamawa State for the election. What's your assessment of the turnout of women? Parti no, I women. think it was huge. Women in particular, because they now it have a, women, a woman that is running. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was huge. It was monumental. You know, don't, don't forget that um, even by just being the candidate of APC, Senator Binani had changed the thinking of uh, Adama political elite towards women. Uh, you know, the incumbent governor had to drop his deputy, who is a man, to pick a woman as a running mate, That's just to, because of uh, the, the, the conscientization of women as a result of Binani's candidature. So we already know that women, and, and last election, during the presidential election, a lot of women did not come out. And when they were asked, they said, look, this is not our election. Our election is coming uh, next, next two weeks. So this election, a lot of women came out, and we were aware right from uh, the onset that there, were, there, there, there may have been some efforts to stop women from participating in today's election, and we put some safeguards. Uh, there were areas that we were told that women were told to vote only after men had voted. We, we complained to INEC. INEC changed that and said, look, the rule is that they are equal. Uh, they should be allowed equal time. There are, there are places also where we were told that um, we, were, we were anticipated that there will be some threats of violence and we know women are mostly peaceful people. They may, they, they may, they may not stand there and wait while uh, the situation was getting tense. So we had, we had identified such flashpoints. We've made uh, adequate arrangement to have security men you know, make sure that the places are safe enough for the women to come out. We knew that there will be a huge turnout of women and the women did not disappoint. They came out hugely. And, and let me tell you, you were talking about weaponization of poverty. I tell you, the, 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 the beyond weaponization of poverty, there was nothing they did not weaponize at this election. <laughs> there was religion, there was region, there was ethnicity. Mm. Uh, some mm. group of uh, misguided Islamic clerics were given money to go around from mosque to mosque preaching that a woman cannot be governor. We had a lot of uh, those challenges, but people said no. And then today we saw it where, you know, people brought out money to buy votes. People collect the money from them and give it to people who they, they ask to vote for APC. Mm -hmm. It was all kind of very, very interesting, not from the gender perspective alone, but from uh, the breaking barriers of a lot of other political myths that exist in this country. We are Thank proud you. that we have got the first woman <clears throat> that had risen up uh, above, above the ladder to mm -hmm. break the glass ceiling. We hope that uh, Aisha Tubinani's uh, governorship will open doors for more women to be governors in the next cycle of elections. Thank you very much, uh, Maila Ahmed Sajo, former Commissioner of Information in Adama State and spokesperson of the Senator Aisha Binani uh, Campaign Council in Adama State. We wish all the candidates the very best. Thank you, and we hope to see you. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I, I hope I hope those of you on the program will come for our inauguration. But the inauguration <laughs> okay, of Aisha yeah, Binani okay, is going to be quite historic. Okay, but in the meantime, we wish all the candidates the very best. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, and 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 see you soon when you return. Thank you. So he, yeah, yeah, he thank raised you, uh, thank you very one much. or two My key issues, particularly regarding the expectations hmm. that Adama North, Adama South. You know, that's Yola and Jimeta, and then moving north, moving south, that they are leading in these areas, but also leading in six uh, uh, other, it's eight it's other local okay, governments uh, uh, across the, 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 the state. What does it mean, Prof, for this, for the outcome of this? Uh, because like uh, uh, Madame said earlier, not just it's in Ademar State or just Nigeria, people all around the world are waiting to see whether uh, some miracle can happen uh, uh, for a woman in a governorship election, whether the ceiling, the glass ceiling that he was talking about, uh, <laughs> can be so, well know. as as <laughs> as usually said by lawyers. Okay, let's assume without conceding. Yes, because, <laughs> because yes. I don't think it will be fair to mm. uh, swallow what he said uh, as, as a campaign spokesperson. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. So, but let's assume that uh, it is true. Uh, it, 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 it makes sense. As he said, they are looking at patterns. Mm -hmm. And by now, I'm sure every party has uh, a situation room. Uh, they must have agents and one or two other persons at every polling unit mm -hmm. who will be feeding them uh, with the information. Mm -hmm. In most cases, contestants and their parties and their people, they know the outcome of elections Even long before every are. other person. Yes, uh, true. Okay, no. Yeah. But uh, usually the 
weaponize the information itself. Yes. <laughs> and maybe engage in a, a nocturnal manipulation, either to change it mm. in one way or the other, uh, or to begin to prepare to subvert uh, the process, uh, or to create stalemates, or to begin to uh, anticipate uh, litigation, and so on and so forth. But on election day like this, uh, it is always good to uh, follow trends and patterns. Mm. And uh, if you do that, uh, you can make realistic projections. Mm. So perhaps that was what he was doing. Mm. Perhaps also it was all uh, hot air. We we'll only know <laughs> within the next 24 like, hours. Well, <laughs> all of which are yeah, possible, you know. All the, 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 the realistic projections yeah. possible, but also yes. hot air yes. are possible yeah. because he represents a side of, of the election. Uh, Maybe uh, if we spoke with we the PDP with the, person, uh, has you have a different yeah. uh, without on, on, on things. <laughs> and actually, we tried to reach uh, uh, the PDP okay. uh, people as well. And <laughs> even as the program is continuing, we are also working to be able to get... Uh, Spokespersons of the uh, PDP uh, governorship candidate in uh, Adamawa State uh, to also come online and tell us what they are expecting because that state is in, in, interesting for the reasons that we have discussed uh, uh, earlier. But, uh, Madam President, to proceed with this discussion, another place where patterns and trends, as uh, Prof uh, uh, put it, you know, where it's interesting is also Lagos. Hmm. Right now, you know, where most uh, Nigerians will be interested in seeing what the result is uh, Look looking like, like uh, in Lagos. What are your expectations based on early, you know, things that are filtering uh, so far? Unfortunately, um, Lagos um, this time around, uh, things are only really coming out of Lagos are not so good. The okay. reports are coming out of Lagos mm. uh, because already we have. Um, Cases, incidences of um, violence mm. in Lagos, profiling of a particular ethnic group, mm. and open intimidation, harassment, threats, you know, and uh, even some polling units, you have um, talks coming to snatch um, ballot, uh, uh, you know, uh, papers, and even journalists, a rice crew were attacked in, in mm. Lagos. Their drone was... Um, was was hijacked, you know, and they were even taken by the police. So the Lagos story is, is the situation this time around. We we really cannot tell. I we don't know if it will reflect what happened during the presidential election. Mm -hmm. But there, what is happening? What happened in Lagos? Some of the polling units, uh, you see voters um, suppression. Mm -hmm you know, intimidation. Mm. And you hear openly some people say, if you're not going to vote for APC, just leave this place. Just like it happened in some pockets of uh, polling units in Lagos during the presidential. Mm. But this time around, there is increase in the number of uh, um, violence in Lagos, attack mm. and intimidation. And I think INEC has even postponed election in 10, mm. 10 polling units in Lagos as we speak. So uh, we don't know what <coughs> uh, the result will be like in Lagos, whether it will reflect the will of the people oh. or not. Because I, I wide spread of people would uh, say that voter such suppression are probably is... Um, an exaggeration, yeah. frankly. No, they are because not. They're really. Okay. Mm. I think she put it even mildly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I think what happened in Lagos uh, tomorrow, the water of uh, Obasanjo was like uh, a K-Lek uh, working mm. for this election. There was systematic voter intimidation mm. and suppression. But beyond that, I think it's a huge setback mm. for two things. One, uh, for inter-ethnic harmony yeah. and national integration. Yeah, it's, it, 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 yeah, it goes deeper than this election. Yeah. And I can assure you that uh, the vibrations from uh, happenings uh, in Lagos today uh, will be heard for many years, yes. many mm -hmm. election cycles to come. And the second major problem about what happened uh, in Lagos, I hope it will not create a phenomenon of deliberate uh, ethnic profiling mm -hmm. and voter suppression mm -hmm. as a weapon mm -hmm. for election. Mm -hmm. Because uh, things like that are likely to be replicated, mm -hmm. particularly where there are no consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, there exactly. was 
clear Thank case you. of mm. ethnic profiling, mm. which is very, very bad. Exactly. But, 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 but the ethnic profiling started even before the election. Yes. If you follow on social media, on, on, on even mainstream uh, 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 media, you know, particularly uh, uh, Lagos is, an, is a case right now of like a sort of war, political war, mm. between uh, Yoruba ethnic group and Igbo ethnic group. The, the, there's no need trying to, uh, you know. Yeah, and, these and, are and the two so. major ethnic but, groups. Exactly, that, but, um, but this, the federal government, in context, yes. the federal government, you know, has been aware of, of these developments, this profiling that we're talking about, you know, rightly uh, bringing up, has been aware of, of that. And that's where the security agencies will come in because the whole essence of having police and other security agencies during election is not just to prevent... Uh, uh, violence from b breaking out, but also to ensure that voters are not intimidated yeah. to or prevented from voting, to enable them vote. So how, what's your assessment of the police and security agencies with regards to so, Lagos specifically, if all of these reports that we're getting are still happening or happened due, uh, at, earlier today? Yeah, you know, earlier we, we did uh, said that um, the security situation was um, substantially okay. Mm. But you know, there is um, the number of personnel allocated to each polling unit is minimal. One personnel to a polling, not even one personnel to a polling unit. Mm. Ideally, that should be the case. But in this governorship election, it's not the case. You know, you see one poly, uh, uh, personnel mm. roving between two or four polling units. Mm. And then uh, these uh, miscreants, when they know that there's no, in fact, they, they are not even afraid of security operatives. They are not afraid of them. And you just cannot explain why, you know, when it comes to the security operatives taking drastic measure at the point in terms of protect, providing protection, yes. they equally tend to like try to save themselves, you know, you know from the problems because they are dealing with talks. Safety first. I, I, some, sometimes I want to believe that this is how Nigerian police tend to think this mm -hmm. time around. Mm -hmm. You know, safety first. Just like for us journalists, mm -hmm. we always tell you that <laughs> no report is worth dying for. Absolutely. You are alive first. You must be alive to tell the story. Mm -hmm. For instance, today in the case of the Arise uh, crew that we are talking yes, about, mm -hmm. the police were there. It was at the palace at the front of a, a particular palace and yeah. there was security so what happened how come this journalist a crew of a reporter you know and the reporter and the cameraman came under attack they were injured mm. and we, we we saw the drone you know in the hands of the police and they were taken who attacked them mm. how did the drone mm. you know find itself in the hands of the police mm. is it that the police ran after the talks and collected the you know these are questions that still are still seeking for answers you know so even journalists were are not spared in this process in the in, we didn't have this incident in the presidential but today and in today's election the channel's reporter was attacked yes arise you know premium whatever in Kano yeah, came attack under attack mm. and even in lafia a journalist was attacked. Mm. Why? And we, we, there are policemen that ought to provide the necessary protection for journalists in covering election. We don't have any other security. Mm. Journalists mm. should rely on them. But this, the case is not it, sincerely speaking. So we don't really know. We have police assuring us, you know, that there are, they've deployed enough security. Yes, it's not about deploy, deploying the security. We just, we just watched a video where we see policemen police standing, standing by while, while money vote, was vote trading, yes. you know, was going on. Yes. So I really, we, there's so much deficit of um, uh, if, efficiency mm -hmm. when it comes to providing adequate security mm -hmm. that will safeguard the lives of Nigeria. And that is why they f you, you see a lot of fear among Nigerians mm -hmm. that a policeman is in a place. Ni an average Nigerian does not believe that that policeman will protect will his or her interest. Protection. Yeah. This also happened in Kano as well. In fact, in Kano, we see situations where uh, uh, thugs were even fighting with police. In some instances, even driving away uh, 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 police, uh, 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 you know, security officials <laughs> in the state. But the a milder version 
of what happened in Lagos. No ethnic uh, dimension to this, mm -hmm. but the ideological and political party differences <laughs> in Kano is also as high, high. as the uh, issues that are happening in Lagos. So how do you view uh, things coming out of Kano with regards to the processes and uh, expected outcomes so far in Kano? Yeah, I think it is uh, more helpful to look at it in the context. Uh, and the context is this. This violence in Lagos, uh, okay, for instance, we have to use uh, three words, uh, okay, to qualify them. They are organized, mm. uh, they are deliberate, mm. and they are systematic. Absolutely. Mm. So, Thanks, to be sure. fair to the police, mm. honestly speaking, police yeah, were overstretched in this kind of context. But if you look at the security architecture around election, beyond the police, another layer of obscurity is supposed to be there two kilometers mm. from the polling unit. DSS. Yeah. So, so yeah. The military. 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 So yes. these are the people who should have checkmated mm. these hoodlums even, even before they reach mm. the polling units. And in voter suppression, mm. the major uh, objective is to stop people from even turning Turn, turning out to vote. Yes. Most of these things are uh, illegal did not actually happen at the polling units. Mm. They happen in neighborhoods. Yes. Where people Before actually the live. polling units. So you cannot entirely blame the police. Mm. Beyond the fact that, yes, the police are the primary uh, responders yes. to such issues. But they are not the only ones. And in election security, mm. uh, Mm. A policeman or two are deployed mm. at the polling units. They are not armed. Mm. Uh, mm. Some meters, you have some uh, okay, that are armed, and two kilometers after soldiers. Mm. So if it is blamed, the entire security architecture and not necessarily the police should be blamed. Thank you. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's mm. the time we usually take uh, views from our uh, uh, viewers as well. Uh, uh, as you are watching... We, our phone lines have just opened, and we're happy to hear from you. Uh, what do you think of the elections, the processes, and the expected outcomes so far as they have occurred in your state or in your neighborhood uh, today? Uh, welcome to Nigeria Decides. When you pick up your phone and make a call, you tell us your name and where you are calling from, and then you can make your contribution or ask a question. We're here for you. Thank you. So, uh, 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 Madam, in addition to uh, what Prof said, that these things happened within neighborhoods, you know, where, and long before it even comes to uh, what do you call uh, uh, polling, polling, units. polling units, where <coughs> elections actually take place. Because the essence of voter suppression is to prevent people to get to the polling unit yes. in the first place, you know. But what about the desperation of the politicians themselves, you know? How does that contribute to? this kind of issues yeah just like he said um this for the case of lagos and even mm. kano yes. some of most of the violence are planned ahead of time mm. for instance how do you explain um uh, the president elect not winning lagos state mm. that is one state he prides himself mm. as the leader and yet during the presidential he lost Lagos State. Absolutely. And we have an incumbent mm. governor. Just a moment, we have a caller. Okay. Uh, we have Isaac from Bauchi mm. on the line. Uh, welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023, where we are talking about the governorship and state houses of assembly elections uh, today. Just go ahead and make your contribution or ask a question. You're welcome, Isaac. Go ahead. Oh, oh we've lost uh, Isaac. Yes, uh, uh, you were talking about... Yes, the, and we uh, not, president we, elect cannot stand the idea of we now losing have, um, election in his own The country. dynamics are are not the same mm. as it used to be previously. Things have changed in Lagos, and it's like as if there is a battle for the soul of Lagos. The Yorubas are claiming to be the owners of Lagos, even mm. among the Yoruba, Yorubas. Mm. A particular section claims to be a more. Uh, well, Isaac is back. Uh, thank you for calling, Isaac. Thank you also for trying again and again. Just go ahead and make your contribution. Go ahead, straight. Yeah, my contribution, 
I just want to appreciate the security personnel okay. and the effort of the IMEX this time around in the election. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Bauchi State, everything has been peaceful. Uh, the IMEX uh, officials came out in time, mm -hmm. distributed all the IMEX material, election materials, Though the turn off was very discouraging, but later in the day was encouraging. Mm -hmm. I actually want to appreciate uh, the government, the IMEC officials, and the security personnel on ground. Mm -hmm. uh, everything has been peaceful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Isaac, for calling, and we hope to hear from you again uh, on another edition of uh, Nigeria Decides. Thank you, all, all the viewers, and we're looking forward to hearing from you today and tomorrow as the Nigeria Decides program uh, continues. Yeah, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, like I, I was saying, mm -hmm. you know, in the last election, the emergence of our Labour Party as the winner of mm -hmm. the presidential election in Lagos was a huge surprise. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the, that's one of the take away for the 2023 general elections. Mm -hmm. And so in the governorship election, mm -hmm. naturally the governor the six re-election will be under undue pressure. We have the PDP on the other side that are equally strong if they camp their campaign is anything to go by. Mm. And the Labour, Pepa, Labour Party governorship candidate okay. sees... Mm. It, it, it just we have as another a, caller. Mm. Yeah. Ibrahim from Bidda, Niger State. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Ibrahim, thank you for calling and welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023. Just... Uh, go ahead and make your contribution or uh, ask a question. Uh oh, we have lost Ibrahim. Tri uh, Ibrahim, try to call again. We would like to hear from you. Yes. So you were. So all that we generate a lot of anxiety, you know, mm -hmm. among all the contestants. Mm -hmm. And so, for we now have a president elect on the APC platform. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Mm. In, Madame, uh, uh, judging by Nigerian pol yes. <laughs> political... I, I get your point, yeah. that the desperation will be even worse, worse. because uh, of, of the, the disparity between being governor-elect and losing your state. And so you cannot afford to lose at the, uh, uh, the state government level. But the, the, some would say that the dynamics for presidential election and governorship elections across the country, not just in Lagos. Mm. Sometimes they are different. Mm. You know, they are not always uh, uh, the same. Do you think that can be a factor this time around? Well, the dynamics mm. may not be the Maybe same. Maybe just before you ask, uh, <laughs> because once the callers start uh, mm. coming, the callers have uh, the right of way. Yes, you can go ahead, tell well, us your name, and then uh, where you are calling from. Oh, oh, it appears like we lost uh, that color. Yes, please. Yeah, so the, the dynamics may be uh, okay. different, mm. but the rippling, uh, the ripples will okay. likely cascade okay. from one election to the to other. The and that's exactly what happened. Mm. In addition to what she said, mm. beyond the uh, severe uh, injury done uh, to the <laughs> to the ego, ego of the yes, yes. <laughs> of the president elect mm. and his team. Mm. I think also the triumphalism mm. of those who won the election mm. compounded the problem. Mm. The way they went about uh, uh, celebrating uh, their victory mm. and some uh, utterances allegedly met by them mm. provoke mm. the other so side. Let, let, let's just cl clarify one or two things triumphalism by those who won the election. There were two sets of camps, both of whom won I mean, the election. Those who won the election in Lagos State. At the federal level? No, yes. Okay. Uh, no, yeah. at the state level. level. At the state level. I'm talking of the Labour Party. The Labour Party, mm. uh -huh, yes. good. Who so, won the, the presidential yes. election in, in, in Lagos? Yes, so Labour Party now started to uh, see itself as a natural replacement of the... Uh, Current. APC and the Tinubu dynasty in Lagos. Interesting. Yes. And the way yes. And the way they went about the showdown coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually they did it uh, somewhat uh, provocatively. Okay. Particularly if you are current in the social media. Mm -hmm. 
uh, well, it is natural uh, to celebrate, mm. but also in celebrating, you have to be careful. If someone is down, he's more likely to react mm. violently. Interesting. So, the supporters mm. of the other side now prepared mm. for war. Because actually that's what happened today. Exactly. Mm. Okay. So we have a, a caller from Wari in Delta State. Please tell us your name and then go ahead to make your contribution or ask your question. Yes. Okay. My name is Lumi Ilya Corin calling from Wari Delta your State. Your name is? Lumi Ilya calling from Wari Delta State. Please go ahead, Lumi. Yes. Okay. I want to comment the INEC official. They really separate the, bring the materials early on and we vote peacefully we vote peacefully we vote peacefully everyone was peacefully calm and the election conducted mm -hmm. well we really appreciate the INA official and the security personnel in Delta State mm -hmm. thank you very much Limi from uh, Wari in Delta State uh, thank you for joining us and we hope you keep uh, joining us on this show as Nigerians uh, decide the fate of uh, their fate in this democratic uh, dispensation in this 2023 general uh, election. So, Prof, you were saying that triumphalism by those who won mm. the presidential election in And the triumphalism yes. also includes a deliberate uh, change of narrative. Mm. Uh, for me, Tinubu uh, was defeated in Lagos not necessarily by the Igbo alone. Mm. But the narrative that came out of it, mm. which was deliberately spawned, mm. not necessarily by the victors, mm. was that the Igbos were plotting to take over Lagos mm. and they must be stopped. Mm. So it was a deliberate uh, narrative mm. to win converts mm. back. To APC. Yes, uh, to APC. Mm. And also to incite uh, the Yorubas Yoruba's to resist to play the ethnic the card. Uh, hey, mm. a an alleged deliberate plot by the Igbos to take over Lagos. Mm. Because what happened today mm. was actually... Just a moment. We have another caller, Emmanuel from Wari. Thank you for calling and thank you for joining us, uh, uh, Emmanuel, on Nigeria Decides 2023. Please go ahead and make your contribution or ask a question about how the election, about anything regarding this uh, uh, 2020 yeah. general elections, yes. In, in the first place, I, I greet all of you that, that making this program. Thank you. The, what I saw in, for what I saw in the daily, yeah, now, mm. the, uh, that is where I call, because I have seen some people giving recommendation to the INEC and confirming that the election is free and fair. But from my own eye and view, I don't see this election as free and fair. I saw where they are dividing money in the, the, in the daily, what I'm seeing there. I saw some people yeah. dividing money in the police station. And there is police men there, around there. And I still saw where people are fighting in the police station, where policemen are there. At the same time, I noticed that there are some people who have been killed. Like Labour, I, I saw uh, for the screen there where they write a, a Labour Party candidate was shot dead. We call this election free and fair. That is the, my, my, my question there. Mm. Can we call it free and fair when we see something that happens in some area like that? And not for the whole federation, no. All this is for some section of area, not the whole federation. Thank you, th th thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, but b yeah. besides that, uh, that where you witnessed this happening, do you have reports that similar things happened in Delta State? Because earlier we had a caller from Delta State who said things were free and fair in his locality. What, what can you tell us and Nigerians viewing this program right now about the election in Delta State overall as a whole, based on uh, what you might have heard from people around you? Uh, in the in Delta State, in some area, where what I'm, I'm not a, a journalist, but I listen for radio and I watch it for television. Mm. I have already I, I saw so many places in Delta State mm. where similar things. Where there's one area, villages, local area where they call Eruene, where they say they they burn by box mm. and uh, 
destroy uh, voting cars and so many things. Mm. Christ is there. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a journalist to, to give account of the whole, what happened in the whole federation. Mm. But from what I'm seeing, I cannot call this election free and fair. Mm. Thank you. As you see me now, I don't belong to any party. Mm. I don't belong to any party. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for being a journalist for five minutes to on this show. Uh, because you have, by giving us this report, you have actually uh, been a journalist at least uh, for this minute. And we appreciate uh, so much. And we hope you join us uh, once again uh, while this show continues over, the, uh, over this week. So, uh, uh, Prof, the, the, the issue that he raised is important, mm -hmm. you know, because you see in the same state, you have one voter saying that mm -hmm. things are fine. Another voter is saying that things are not so fine. So how do we explain these things, you know, uh, where you have uh, such diametrically opposed views from voters within the same state? I yeah, I think uh, each of them uh, was talking about what he saw. Mm. Uh, so for us to make a statewide mm. uh, conclusion uh, or whatever, we have to look at the state uh, as a whole. The accounts of two persons will not be enough. Each of them uh, spoke from the point of view of what they witnessed personally. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there could be other perspectives and uh, uh, opinions about what transpired. Mm. This thing is a developing story. Mm. We are still uh, getting more reports, uh, hearing more things. The media cannot get everything, but uh, the people uh, themselves would gradually come out uh, and begin to narrate what actually happened. Then from there, we can have an aggregate position of what happened where. Thank you. Interesting. But some of the, I think this takes us to some uh, more volatile states particularly within northern Nigeria. I need to where we had, I'm okay. sorry. Mm. I just want to make um, an impression, Please. to mm. correct an impression. Mm. I think we, we never said on this show mm. that uh, we are, we, I don't think we have rated the, 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 no. the, the outcome of the election and said it mm. is generally good. We didn't say so. No. Mm. But we commended the commencement of the process mm. in terms of delivery, Deployment. opening of polling units, mm. you know, on time and arrival of materials and INEC officials. These were the things we said were well, you know, they were well taken care of by INEC. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. But then we, we now went ahead, we identified some of the hitches in we specific areas. From... Okay, I'd like uh, from Kefi, please. Uh, you're welcome yeah. to Nigeria Decides uh, 2023. Just go ahead and make your contribution or ask a question. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Slima. You see, uh, one thing that I just want to chip in mm -hmm. regarding election. Election is a process. And when you are discussing results from a process, you need to look at it holistically. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, individual reports from you, this one says this, this one says that, this one says this, this one contradicts mm -hmm. the other. Mm -hmm. Of course, it helps. It's, it's, it's a collection of information you are gathering. Mm -hmm. However, generally speaking, the major challenge of Nigeria's election, especially this one that we are witnessing, is security. You see, the security situation has worsened from the last election to this election, if you observe. Hmm. So I think there is need, and as people cannot blame INEC on security. Hmm. You see, the issue is that there is need for our security men and women hmm. to be up at election. Because a situation whereby thugs mm. will just come to, into a polling unit and destroy things and get away with and, and, mm. and walk away free. I think this is an indictment on our security. Mm. So the issue is more, you can see there is mm. this, thing, this time around. But mm. how the security situation has worsened. You, you understand? So I think people mm. should should think I mean, of course to an extent by what? By improving their systems. And it is clear that there is improvement in their systems. So the point here is, let us de-emphasize the issue of blaming INEC on everything. No. Mm. INEC is to conduct election. Mm. 
and they are doing their best in conducting the elections. Our stakeholders doing what they are supposed to do to make the election uh, uh, free, fair, and credible. But the questions is everything that I know does on election. No, therefore there is need to talk on security. Security mm. situation are security challenges. Of course, it's a general problem in Nigeria. However, when it comes to election, sensitive issue like this, I think security should be up and going. Mm. Thank you very much. Mr. Thank you very much, uh, Mali Abdullahi from uh, Kefi in Nesara State. Thank you for, for your views. You know, So, uh, <clears throat> not just... Uh, um, uh, uh, INEC, you know, we cannot lay all the blames yeah. uh, on INEC, but other stakeholders, uh, particularly security uh, 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 in the process, you know. We've just about come to the end of the show now, so maybe I will just, uh, uh, final comments. We, there are states where a lot of people were expecting, or at least had fears, that maybe violence might break out because of what has been going on previously, mm -hmm. particularly in the Northeast, for example, you had Gombe State, right? Yeah. Where there had been skirmishes between PDP yeah, and APC. Yeah. So far, we have not had yeah, uh, uh, any issues. Uh, Plateau State also, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Nasara State yeah. also, even Benue yeah. as well, you know. So what's going on that we don't have uh, these security incidences in the north appear to be quite uh, located to just one area, even Katsena, despite the banditry and, and, and all these things that are going on there. Uh, so far, you, the reports we had in all these places, maybe we can use this as closing remarks. So for the not if you notice even during the presidential elections, uh, there was no no much uh, violence. I think basically for the north in our analysis, you know what trended more in the north is the issue of um, vote buying, you know, and um, inducements. Yes. And then, okay, and pockets of violence in places like uh, in Kano mm -hmm. in the northwest. Mm -hmm. um, for the northeast, uh, there was a record of um, snatching of ballot uh, papers in uh, some part of Yobe State. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I think the people generally conducted themselves mm -hmm. well. Um, they equally understand that they need to you know, do the needful so that the process can be seen to be uh, credible. Thank you. Uh, that's my thinking. But in some states in the southwest, the south southeast, mm -hmm. there's in, in Eboyi, for instance, a chairman of a local government shot an agent, a party agent, PDP, to death. That's serious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you, mm -hmm. it has to do with um, some governors that are leaving office. Mm -hmm. They want to install mm -hmm. their people there. And so that desperation, mm -hmm. to a large extent, is what has resulted to some of this crisis, mm -hmm. I mean, violence. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Lady. Uh, pro pro final comments regarding this issue of role, uh, security, and the election process in general. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, security is a key mm -hmm. factor uh, in election. Mm -hmm. We can never get it right if uh, our security personnel are not uh, mm -hmm. up and doing. And I think... One of the major downsides of this election mm. was the collapse of the security architecture in uh, certain areas. Mm. Although uh, the pleasant surprise is that uh, against widespread uh, projections yes. uh, in certain states that uh, uh, problems were, were expected, uh, they didn't happen. I think uh, that was simply uh, some kind of lock. Uh, okay, like Bochi State. Bochi mm -hmm. was very, very tensed. Uh, in fact, there were deaths, about one or two in the... Uh, Before the, the election. Yes, mm -hmm. in the uh, local government area. Also in Akuyam, in the local government mm -hmm. and so on. But today, all was quiet. Mm -hmm. The same thing uh, uh, with Kaduna. Mm -hmm. We commend them uh, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't because of the security uh, mm -hmm. personnel. Mm -hmm. But for me, the collapse of security is always first and foremost the function of the political class. Mm. It is actually the political class in their desperation. Yes. The candidates and mm. their parties and their supporters, mm. they are the people who uh, create these problems. The security personnel are only, uh, their role is to contain the problem. Mm. So we have to call on members of the political class to eschew do or die politics. Yeah. That's the only thing 
they can stop this. Mm, the political class must eschew uh, do or die politics, and that's the only thing that can stop uh, this kind of uh, security breaches during uh, our elections. I think this is where we come uh, to the end of the show. Professor Abubakar Kari, thank you for joining us uh, today, and we hope to have you here again tomorrow for continuing analysis of uh, the election because by that time maybe we'll have more about the results and then we can look at issues like voter turnout. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Madam Ladi, also uh, uh, president of the National Association of oh, Women Journalists. Journalists. I yeah. wanted to get it correct this <laughs> time. Nigerian Association, actually. <laughs> of Nigeria, yeah. So yeah. thank you also thank for you joining so us. And we also hope that you'll be able to join us tomorrow again sure. as we analyze more of these results uh, uh, as they come. Thank you also, our viewers, for staying with us. Uh, uh, this is where we draw the curtain to the program and where we call it uh, a day or even a night. And we hope that you will join us tomorrow when we meet. But before we then, be before we meet tomorrow again, we'll leave you with this. The greatest strength of any people lies in their unity. So as the outcome of the polls emerge, Nigerians must unite for the good of the country. And we hope that you think around that and do just that. Thank you. I am Suleiman Suleiman. Good night.